Let's uh, switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about anti-aging medicine. I know that's one of the things that you, uh, a service you provide here. How important is hormone balancing when it comes to anti-aging? It's very important, especially for the population that is, um, you know, dealing with the problems with aging, whether it's fatigue, with, mm -hmm. you know, chronic joint pain, uh, not at the ideal body weight. We're finding that, you know, when hormones become imbalanced, it's like you can have a very talented orchestra. You've got the best trumpet players, the best saxophone players, the percussion. Everybody's amazing what they do but the saxophone's a little bit off balance and he's just out of tune and then your violin guys are a little bit off key so everybody's working but they're just not working together mm -hmm. so then you go and you find balance the, the the percussion you get everything tuned also the orchestra's working amazing it's the same thing inside our body our body has hundreds of hormones that are working together they're overlapping they're helping each other out they're supporting each other but if those guys aren't finely tuned if one's too low one's too high it's going to create a lot of havoc in the body mm -hmm. which directly relates to aging creates inflammation in the body, degenerates the joints, where it also makes it such that if I do injure my knee, if my hormones are out of balance and I don't have enough growth hormone, testosterone, other things, I'm not going to heal that thing appropriately because I don't have all those anabolic hormones to help my body heal. Anabolic just means heal, repair, and grow, and so um, it does affect it a lot. When you talk about balancing, and you've mentioned baseline before too, how do you know what is low, what is normal, what is high? Are we all different when it comes to levels? Yeah, everybody's a little bit different, and there's going to be definitely a range of, quote, normal. Mm -hmm. There's also a range of what is optimal. So, you know, for example, say I went in to get my vitamin D level checked, and my vitamin D came back at 32. So one doctor might say, oh, congratulations, your test is normal. You're in the normal range. You're at 32. If somebody came to me with a 32 vitamin D, I'd say, wow, you know, your vitamin D is not optimal. We need to get you on vitamin D because the optimal level for vitamin D is about 80. At 32, mm -hmm. vitamin D really can't do anything healthy for you. I mean, it can maybe help a little bit with bone density. But if you get your vitamin D levels to 80 by supplementing with some vitamin D because you can't, you know, make enough vitamin mm -hmm. D through the sun, if you supplement with some vitamin D, I can get your bone density to get better. I can get you more energy. Studies show you can increase your strength by 20%. For guys, it decreases the risk of prostate and colon cancer. For women, breast cancer and colon cancer. Uh, mood and all those other positive things, those only happen once your D is optimized. So just because I'm in that normal range of 30 to 100 doesn't mean I'm optimal. Mm -hmm. So it's real important to optimize things, not just to normalize them.